When Episcopal priest Sterling Rayburn walked into the Winter Haven Probation and Parole Office years ago, my wife who worked there watched him check in for a 10-year probation sentence of sexual battery of a young boy. He was arrested in Miami, Florida. Now, where are the records today? He only did, from what I can find, five years of that probation. And we know he is now in New Mexico under the name Father Andrew at St. Michael's Church in Carnones, New Mexico. Okay? He wears a, a pictorial cross and has a magazine under the name of Isaac Melton, okay? And the parents at St. Michael's are getting upset because they're hearing about his past here in Winter Haven, Florida. And the reason I want to talk about Sterling Rayburn is I am originally from New Mexico. It's my home state. Uh, born in Texas, but grew up in New Mexico. My wife and her family ran into this character, Sterling Rayburn, who was once with the St. Mary's Church of Winter Haven, and he is suspected of child molestation acts there also. He was arrested, however, under the name Sterling Milton Peter Rayburn at the Orthodox Church of America in Miami, Florida, for giving a young boy alcohol and marijuana, and then performing oral sex on that child. He used his position as a priest to have a sex act with a young boy, and there's more out there. There's many more out there. He has two pending, uh, not pending, excuse me, he has two archived uh, felony cases right here in Winter Haven, Florida, and there's the case numbers right there if anybody is interested. I've, I'm going to do a... a um, records request for that. I tried to get it pulled up today, but because it's archived, uh, I cannot get it today, but I will get it. I also called the uh, Probation and Parole and Classification in Tallahassee, Florida to get his inmate face sheet. When I pull him up on the offender search, the offender release, he does not come up. Yes, this was years ago, but that must be archived as well. So I'm going to get all that information and I'll update it in the comments when I get it. But I want to send it out to my uh, friends out there in New Mexico so they can see everything. They are aware now of, of his actions here in Florida, but I want to send them some hard copies uh, under the public records law of Florida. Uh, he's, he's up in age now, but you know what? Uh, from what I've learned in, in working in corrections and law enforcement, the age doesn't matter. If the young boys are, are not a target, he'll, he'll drop to... Uh, smaller ages, you know, he was with 11, 12, 13, 14 year old boys. Uh, if he gets too old to handle them, he'll move down to five, six year old boys. Um, that's the way these uh, predators and sexual offenders work. I couldn't find him on the FDLE sex offender database either. Does not mean he's not there. But now here's my question, folks. How do you do all these things and then keep coming back with a new name and aliases and get to go to a church, you know, and, and continue on as Father um, uh, Andrew in New Mexico. He shouldn't be allowed to be in any church. And they have a, a children's program there. And this is why the parents in New Mexico are being upset about finding this history out about him. You know, uh, he approached uh, my wife when she was old enough to watch her brother and sister who were younger than her, and he asked on a couple of occasions, let me take your brother and sister out on my boat. And she said, absolutely not, and my parents will be home soon. You cannot take them out on the boat. Um, she was asked by this guy. Now, he has a history of boys, right? But she was asked if uh, he could take her out on the boat, and her parents, you know, thought, well, this is a, a pastor of the uh, church uh, here in Winter Haven. And uh, 
he, St. Mary, not St. Mary, but the church in Winter Haven at the time, and they were trusting of him, but she said no, and thank God, you know, no history that I know of with girls, but he did ask to take my wife when they, when she was little and her sister out on a boat, so I want to thank God right now that uh, they didn't go. Thank God that she didn't allow her brother and her sister to go with this, with this pedophile, this predator. Um, uh, I use him as a prime example, not only because of uh, the history he has here with us in uh, Winter Haven, but as an example of many others that are out there. Why are these type people allowed to hide behind the cloth? Let's talk about this church, St. Michael's Church in Coronel, Mexico, New Mexico. They were asked, why is he here? And they said, well, he's not actually a priest, you know. Uh, he's just a member of the church and we let him stay here and he's not around children. Uh, parents seem to think otherwise, that he does have access to children. Uh, and here he is out in New Mexico now as Father Andrew and acting like nothing ever happened. Uh, don't know how he got 10 years probation. I know he pled to it. Should have went to prison. I think anybody that does what he did uh, needs to be in prison. And those are my thoughts. He shouldn't be allowed to be out. So I blame our system for letting him way off too easy. Our system right here in Florida let him way off too easy. And I blame also the clergy of the churches, you know, uh, St. Mary's Church in Winter Haven. We can't really point the finger at them. That was where he first started and where he first started this business with boys. But then he moved to Miami uh, as I told you, um, and I, with the church down there and got caught and got arrested. Now he's in New Mexico with a, with another church, you know, St. Mary's Church. How many times is he going to change his denomination, his appearance, and hide behind the cloth and be protected by the clergy of the churches? This is happening in America all over, all the time. I just wanted to pinpoint this one. You know, my wife remembers when he came in so vividly because they knew of him on the outside world, you know, when he was asking to take her, her and her brothers and sisters out on his boat. And she she knew that he'd been arrested for this, and there he comes to sign in to the, probation, to the very probation office that she's working at. She even knows which officer he was assigned to and who the supervisor was then. It was, you know, so close to home. Uh, we are not happy with Sterling Rayburn being able to run around and hide behind the cloth. We're not happy with others like him that are allowed to run around and hide behind the cloth. And we need to take action and we need our system, the criminal justice system, to be harsher on them. Don't go easy on them because they're in a church. They should be even punished more for representing a church and using their position of authority as a priest or a pastor or whatever denomination they are, whatever they are in the church, a deacon, whatever position they hold, to use that to manipulate children into having sex with them. They need to be punished harshly. Somebody out there is probably saying right now, please forgive Sterling Rayburn and let the Lord take care of it. Well, I agree. Let the Lord take care of it. And I believe in my heart he will. But who's going to take care of all those children between 11 and 14 back then who are now adults who live with it in their mind every day? You know, does it pop up in their mind every day? I don't know, but I'm sure it pops up from time to time in their mind. It's a traumatic event. Who's going to help them? I'm, I don't want these people to be hidden behind the cloth. I want them behind bars in prison where they belong. Pay your dues while you're here on earth, Sterling Rayburn, and others like you. And then when you do pass the earth phase, let the Lord do as he deems necessary and as he feels he should do with you. Please watch Gary York True Pin Stories. I'm going to end here with pictures of others and what they did underneath their picture for probably one or two minutes. I'm going to scroll of all these people across the country who were in churches 
working in different positions in churches and molesting children. Just look at these faces. Thank you. Gary York, True Prison Story. Please subscribe.